Carrie Chapman Catt January 9, 1859, to March 9, 1947, was an American women's suffrage leader who campaigned for the 19th Amendment to the United States Constitution, which gave U.S. women the right to vote in 1920. Catt served as president of the National American Woman Suffrage Association and was the founder of the League of Women Voters and the International Alliance of Women. She led an army of voteless women in 1919 to pressure Congress to pass the constitutional amendment giving them the right to vote and convinced state legislatures to ratify it in 1920," and "...was one of the best known women in the United States in the first half of the 20th century and was on all lists of famous American women." Early life. Cat was born Carrie Clinton Lane in Ripon, Wisconsin, the daughter of Maria Louisa Clinton and Lucius Lane. Cat spent her childhood in Charles City, Iowa. She moved to Iowa at the age of seven where she began school. As a child, Cat was interested in science and wanted to become a doctor. After graduating from high school, she enrolled at Iowa State Agricultural College now Iowa State University in Ames, Iowa. Kat's father was initially reluctant to allow her to attend college, but he relented, contributing only a part of the costs. To make ends meet, Kat worked as a dishwasher, in the school library, and as a teacher at rural schools during school breaks. Kat's freshman class consisted of 27 students, six of whom were female. Cat joined the Crescent Literary Society, a student organization aimed at advancing student learning skills and self-confidence. Because only men were allowed to speak in meetings, Cat defied the rules and spoke up during a male debate. This started a discussion about women's participation in the group, and ultimately led to women gaining the right to speak in meetings. Cat was also a member of Pi Beta Phi, started an all girls debate club, and advocated for women's participation in military drill. After three years, Cat graduated on November 10, 1880, with a Bachelor of Science degree. She was the valedictorian and only female in her graduating class. She worked as a law clerk after graduating, then she became a teacher and then superintendent of schools in Mason City, Iowa in 1885. She was the first female superintendent of the district. In February 1885, Carey married newspaper editor Leo Chapman, but he died in California in August 1886, soon after of typhoid fever. She remained in San Francisco where she worked as the city's first female reporter. In 1890, she married George Catt, a wealthy engineer and alumnus of Iowa State University. He encouraged her being involved in suffrage. Their marriage allowed her to spend a good part of each year on the road campaigning for women's suffrage, a cause she had become involved with in Iowa during the late 1880s. Life and work Role in women's suffrage National American Woman Suffrage Association In 1887, Cat returned to Charles City, where she had grown up, and became involved in the Iowa Woman Suffrage Association. From 1890 to 1892, Cat served as the Iowa Association's state organizer and group's recording secretary. During her time in office, Cat began working nationally for the National American Woman Suffrage Association NAWSA, and was even a speaker at its 1890 convention in Washington, D.C. In 1892, Cat was asked by Susan B. Anthony to address Congress on the proposed woman suffrage amendment. Cat would go on to succeed Anthony as NAWSA president. She was elected president of NAWSA twice, her first term was from 1900 to 1904 and her second term was from 1915 to 1920. She resigned after her first term to care for her ailing husband. She would resume leadership of NAWSA in 1915, which had become badly divided under the leadership of Anna Howard Shaw. During her later years of leadership she increased the size of the organization and raised many dollars of funds. In 1916, at a NAWSA convention in Atlantic City, New Jersey, Cat unveiled her winning plan. Cat established this plan in 1916 to have senators and representatives from different states support the suffrage amendment. Her campaign's goals were to obtain suffrage on both the state and federal levels, and to compromise for partial suffrage in the states resisting change. 
Under Katz's leadership, NAWSA won the backing of the U.S. House and Senate, as well as state support for the amendment's ratification. Under Katz's leadership the movement focused on success in at least one eastern state, because previous to 1917 only western states had granted female suffrage. Katz thus led a successful campaign in New York State, which finally approved suffrage in 1917. During that same year President Wilson and the Congress entered World War I Cat made the controversial decision to support the war effort, which shifted the public's perception in favor of the suffragists who were now perceived as patriotic. The suffrage movement received the support of President Woodrow Wilson in 1918. After endless lobbying by CAT and NAWSA, the suffrage movement culminated in the adoption of the 19th Amendment to the U.S. Constitution on August 26, 1920. In her efforts to win women's suffrage state by state, CAT sometimes appealed to the prejudices of the time. In South Dakota, CAT lamented that while women lacked suffrage, the murderous Sioux is given the right to franchise which he is ready and anxious to sell to the highest bidder. In 1894, Cat urged that uneducated immigrants be stripped of their right to vote. The United States should cut off the vote of the slums and give it to women. White supremacy will be strengthened, not weakened, by women's suffrage, was her argument when trying to win over Mississippi and South Carolina in 1919. NAWSA was by far the largest organization working for women's suffrage in the U.S. from her first endeavors in Iowa in the 1880s to her last in Tennessee in 1920. CAT supervised dozens of campaigns, mobilized numerous volunteers, one million by the end, and made hundreds of speeches. After the passage of the 19th Amendment to the United States Constitution, Cat retired from NAWSA. Cat continued her work for women's suffrage even after she retired from her presidency post at NAWSA due to the health problems of her second husband. Carrie became involved in the International Women's Suffrage Alliance subsequent to the death of her husband. Cat founded the League of Women Voters in 1920 to encourage women to use their hard won right in 1920 before the amendment was passed, serving as its honorary president for the rest of her life. In the same year, she ran as the presidential candidate for the ideologically Georgist Commonwealth Land Party. In 1923, with Nettie Rogers Schuler, she published Woman Suffrage and Politics, the Inner Story of the Suffrage Movement. International women's suffrage movement Cat was also a leader of the international women's suffrage movement. She helped to found the International Woman Suffrage Alliance in 1902, which eventually incorporated sympathetic associations in 32 nations. She served as its president from 1904 until 1923. After her husband's death in 1905, Cat spent much of the following eight years as IWSA president promoting equal suffrage rights worldwide. After she retired from NAWSA, she continued to help women around the world to gain the right to vote. The IWSA remains in existence, now as the International Alliance of Women. Topic. Role during the World Wars Cat was active in anti-war causes during the 1920s and 1930s. Cat resided at Juniper Ledge in the Westchester County, New York community of Briarcliff Manor from 1919 through 1928 when she settled in nearby New Rochelle, New York. At the beginning of World War I, Cat and fellow suffragist Jane Addams were asked to spearhead an organization that promoted peace. Cat was hesitant to join the peace movement because she believed this to be an issue that men and women should collaborate on. Reluctantly, Cat and Adams called a meeting to gain support from the women's movement. Cat did not want to be the leader of the group because she believed that her support of the peace movement would hurt her international work with suffrage since leadership of the group would mean she was favoring one country over another. From this meeting came the decision that the NAWSA would aid the government by helping women prepare to take over jobs while men were away and would also aid the Red Cross. In addition, the group made it known that women's suffrage would remain their top priority. During 1917, Kat's attention remained strongly focused on women's suffrage, leading her to abandon her work with the peace movement. This led to tension between Cat and other activists. After the 19th Amendment was passed, granting women the right to vote, Cat returned to the peace movement. 
Because she did not want to join any existing organization, she and a group of others founded their own organization, the National Committee on the Cause and Cure of War The group divided the causes of war into four categories, psychological, economic, political, and social and contributory. They did not include the exclusion of women from politics and the public sphere as a cause, even though they believed in equality for women. The organization believed that it was their job as women to end wars because women were seen as morally courageous, in contrast to their male counterparts who were viewed as physically courageous. During World War II, Kat resigned her role within NCCCW, admitting that the organization did not turn out the way she had planned. The organization had not included all women, only middle class white women. It did not strengthen the abilities of the members, but simply educated people on international affairs. In 1933, in response to Adolf Hitler's rise to power, Kat organized the Protest Committee of Non Jewish Women Against the Persecution of Jews in Germany. The group sent a letter of protest to Hitler in August 1933 signed by 9,000 non Jewish American women. It decried acts of violence and restrictive laws against German Jews. Kat pressured the U.S. government to ease immigration laws so that Jews could more easily take refuge in America. For her efforts, she became the first woman to receive the American Hebrew Medal. Kat was aware of her reputation. In 1938 she refused to sign a letter in support of leading Hungarian feminists Eugenia Meller and Charlotte Steinberger's request to emigrate to the USA. She noted that she was old and the letter would remain after her death. The last event she helped organize was the Women's Centennial Congress in New York in 1940, a celebration of the feminist movement in the United States. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Death and Recognition. On March 9, 1947, Cat died of a heart attack in her home in New Rochelle, New York. She was buried at Woodlawn Cemetery in the Bronx, New York City, alongside her longtime companion, Mary Garrett Hay, a fellow New York State suffragist, with whom she lived for over 20 years. Kat attained recognition for her work both during and after her lifetime. In 1926, she was featured on the cover of Time magazine and, in 1930, she received the Pictorial Review Award for her international disarmament work. In 1941, Kat received the Chi Omega Award at the White House from her longtime friend Eleanor Roosevelt. In 1975, Kat became the first inductee into the Iowa Women's Hall of Fame. A stamp was issued in 1948 in remembrance of the Seneca Falls Convention, featuring Kat, Elizabeth Cady Stanton, and Lucretia Mott. In 1982, Kat was inducted into the National Women's Hall of Fame. In 1992, the Iowa Centennial Memorial Foundation named her one of the ten most important women of the century. The same year, Iowa State University established the Kerry Chapman Cat Center for Women and Politics and in 1992, and the old Botany Building on Central Campus was renovated and renamed Kerry Chapman Cat Hall in 1995. Cat was played by Angelica Houston in the 2004 film Iron Jawed Angels. In 2013, she was one of the first four women to be honored on the Iowa Women of Achievement Bridge in Des Moines. On August 26, 2016, Women's Equality Day, a monument commissioned by Tennessee Suffrage Monument, Inc. and sculpted by Alan LaQuire was unveiled in Centennial Park in Nashville, featuring depictions of Cat, Ann Dallas Dudley, Abby Crawford Milton, Juno Frankie Pierce, and Sue Shelton White. Controversies During her early years in the NAWSA, Kat expressed her unease with the views of Elizabeth Cady Stanton, a founder of the women's suffrage movement who tended to be more radical than many of the younger activists. In 1895, Stanton created a stir by writing The Woman's Bible, a critical examination of the Bible that challenged traditional religious beliefs that women are to be passive and are inferior to men. Many NAWSA members feared that the book would damage the suffrage movement by alienating its more orthodox members. Cat and Susan B. Anthony, the NAWSA's president, met with Stanton prior to its publication to voice their concerns, but Stanton was unmoved. An intense debate about Stanton's book occurred at the 1896 NAWSA convention after her opponents introduced a resolution declaring that the NAWSA has no official connection with the so called Woman's Bible. Kat supported the resolution, along with Anna Howard Shaw, a future president of the organization, and other leading figures. 
Despite strong opposition from Anthony, who argued that there was no need for such a resolution, it passed by a vote of 54 to 41. Stanton afterwards tried to convince Anthony, her old friend and co-worker, that they should both resign from the NAWSA in protest, but Anthony refused. Stanton did not resign from the organization either. Some historians, including Elizabeth Gillespie McRae, consider Kat's arguments and her stance on rights for women to be representative of white women only. While fighting a losing battle for women's rights in a southern state, she once countered the opposition of racist senators by claiming that white supremacy will be strengthened, not weakened, by women's suffrage, since white women voted at higher rates. Amidon argues that for CAT, people of color could be included in, or excluded from, participation in evolutionary narratives of progress depending on a wide range of factors, from ideological standards to local political circumstance." Deborah Marquardt, a professor at Iowa State University, argues that Carrie Chapman CAT is not a woman of our time, and therefore, we cannot hold her to the standards of our time. CAT also made inclusive statements about race. The struggle for woman suffrage no white woman's struggle, but every woman's struggle. If it is expedient, then obviously all the people must be included. And. There will never be a true democracy until every responsible and law-abiding adult in it, without regard to race, sex, color or creed has his or her own inalienable and unpurchasable voice in government. Katz's language resulted in a controversy at Iowa State University, the school from which she graduated. One student, who declared that the name of Cat Hall was offensive to black students, engaged in a hunger strike to pressure the university to negotiate the renaming of the building. He objected to Katz's statement that the only way to achieve a dominant white class was by allowing women to become enfranchised. The Ames chapter of the NAACP also objected to the building name. The building was not renamed, however. Personal life Despite being married twice, Cat did not live with her husband full-time. After the death of George Cat, she lived with Mary Molly Garrett Hay, a suffragist leader from New York. Hay was not a part of the international circle of elites that Cat aligned herself with, however, it was understood that they had a special relationship. Cat requested burial alongside Hay, rather than either of her husbands. When Hay died in 1928, Alda Wilson moved in with Cat and remained as her secretary until Cat's death. Wilson was Cat's companion and eventual estate executor, donating six volumes of photographs and memorabilia from Cat's estate to Bryn Mawr College. Topic: In popular culture. Winter Wheat, a new musical by Kathy Bush about the ratification of the 19th Amendment in Tennessee, premiered at the Barter Theater in 2016. The original version of the play had a limited run at the Barter in 2014. Carrie Chapman Cat and Mary Garrett Hay are characters in the play. The show also features anti-suffragist Josephine Anderson Pearson and Tennessee State Representative Harry T. Byrne, who cast the deciding vote for ratification in Tennessee. Cat was portrayed by Angelica Houston in the film Iron Jawed Angels. Topic. See also. List of civil rights leaders. List of suffragists and suffragettes. List of women's rights activists Timeline of women's suffrage Open Christmas letter Women's suffrage organizations <laughs>